Hello, Open Heart Project. It is great to see you. I'm looking forward to sitting together. We're gonna to sit together today for 10 minutes and we're gonna start soon. So please take your seat, whether you're on a cushion on the floor with your legs crossed loosely in front of you or in a chair and a chair is fantastic. And if you are in a chair, please sit with your feet flat on the floor. And uh, as you may know, uh, since the pandemic started and our society has uh, been going through incredibly powerful and important reckonings. I have been coming to you once a week with meditations instead of once a month. And I started with the first of the six paramitas or transcendent actions. And today we come to the sixth paramita, uh, which is called prajna or wisdom. And I did the first four and then I made some videos for you guys about mindful speech and that kind of thing. And then last week we did the fifth paramita, meditative absorption. This week we're gonna do the sixth, wisdom. And after this, I'm gonna go back to communicating with you once a month. Um, it has been so great to be in closer contact, but just on a personal note, and PS, if you wanna skip ahead to the meditation, please do, you do not have to listen to this part. For me, the work in the Open Heart Project has become even more consuming, I mean that in a good way, than it was before. And at the, we're doing so much at the Open Heart Project right now with great joy, and I'm not trying to pat ourselves on the back or anything, but we're offering three meditations, it was four meditations every day, Monday through Friday. Now it's three, free for everyone. Uh, we're doing more online retreats and I'm creating more and more content, but not just content, also opportunities to get together for the Open Heart Project Sangha, which is the membership group within the Open Heart Project. And I, I hope you will consider joining for all sorts of reasons. First, uh, I hope it will be provide the encouragement and inspiration and community that you are looking for to navigate this incredibly intense time. You are not alone. There are a lot of people out there who feel as you do and who um, are working towards the same aims and who are dedicated to working with their own minds and hearts to bring more goodness to the world, your immediate world and the greater world. So you don't have to do this by yourself. Um, there are incredible opportunities to practice with wonderful teachers. Uh, there's a weekly Dharma gathering each week with a different teacher. There's uh, classes, all sorts of things. Uh, it's a, anyway, I think it's great. And also it is very supportive and I, this, I feel uncomfortable saying this, but your support is what enables me to keep doing this. So I, this is my job and I want to keep doing it as well as I can and offering it as widely as I can. And the membership uh, supports me to do that. So if you have valued our, this time together and you wanna keep working together, please consider joining the Open Heart Project Sangha. I know this is not an easy time financially for many, many people. So if that is an obstacle, um, please come, continue to come to the free meditations every single day. They're there for you and the teachers are fantastic. So, okay, blah, 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 enough of that. The sixth paramita, prajna, which means wisdom. I, I can't say that much about it, that might sound anticlimactic, mainly because I don't understand it. I'm not gonna front or lie to you. So, 
if anyone says, by the way, oh yeah, I know what prajna is, I understand wisdom. That's, I would look askance at that person uh, because true wisdom, wisdom that transcends uh, convention is ineffable, inexpressible, ungraspable, and at the same time, absolutely not separate from you or this moment or me. So it's one of the reasons it's so hard to express is you can't step away from it and look at it. Although there are you know, many extraordinary teachers that have wonderful teachings on prajna and they're central to the spiritual journey. So I highly recommend studying whatever you can on the topic of prajna, the classical view uh, of prajna is in a sutra called the Prajnaparamita Sutra, which is very, very long. Um, but there's a section in it, a liturgy that many, many Buddhists all over the world chant every single day because it is absolutely central to the understanding of the journey. So the Prajnaparamita Sutra has a mantra in it uh, towards the end. And the mantra is, Om Gate Gate Parasam Gate, Om Gate Gate Paragate Parasam Gate Bodhisvaha, which means something like gone, gone, gone beyond, gone completely beyond. Fabulous. Gone beyond what? Gone beyond insanity, sorrow, rage. to the other shore of sanity and peace and justice that is real. How do you get there? How do you paragate parasamgate? The six paramitas carry you there. They're called transcendent actions because they help you transcend what is holding you back. And they're very simple and very extraordinary at the same time. Just briefly, the first five, generosity, discipline, patience, exertion, meditative absorption, prajna. Without pra this, they work in a sort of circular way in the sense that uh, if you practice the first five, you will naturally acquire the sixth prajna. However, it is not possible to practice the first five without prajna, your practice will be uh, somewhat less than ideal. So it's a, it's a, of a piece. So wisdom. In the classical texts, prajna is broken down into three categories. The first is mundane prajna, regular wisdom. Mundane, meaning earth, earthly, ordinary. And this isn't just like, oh, I know how to, um, you know, I know how to use Zoom, although the, 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 that is a mundane prajna we all need, need these days. But it means also, I know how to be a decent person and I understand the world I live in. I have some idea about human culture and human nature. I have know how to add and subtract. I know math. I have some sense of my own culture and the great works of art and literature. Not that you have to be a nerd or a scholar, but I know the world I live in. I am connected to it. I also know how to act in the world, AKA I have decent manners. Now, I could write a whole book about decent manners because I'm kind of obsessed with the topic, not like what fork to use, but how to be thoughtful and how to be considerate of others. So that is a very important part of mundane prajna. I know how to be a decent human because I really trained myself or so I was lucky enough to have someone teach me. So that's the first kind. It's very important. Mundane doesn't mean less than. It means um, I'm a good citizen. 
in the deepest sense of the word. The second category of prajna is a prajna that transcends worldliness. So yeah, I have good manners, I read some things and I have some basic sense of how to be a decent human. And now what? what? What is after that? What is this journey that I'm on? What is spiritual practice? What is my mind? Who am I? What is my life? These are very powerful and important questions, obviously. And they transcend worldliness. They are eternal questions or transcendent questions, uh, you could say. They go beyond conventional concerns. And that's a very powerful and important form of wisdom to cultivate. And the third category of prajna is prajna that transcends dharmas. So even if you study the journey, and become a skilled spiritual practitioner and uh, have a nuanced understanding of wisdom, compassion, and power, there's still something beyond that. There is wisdom that transcends even the teachings on wisdom themselves, even Dharma itself. That's why it's so hard to explain. You can't explain it. So here's a little illustration, however, that might convey the felt sense of uh, prajna that transcends dharmas. So the first prajna, mundane prajna, you just learn how to be a decent human by whatever means you can. It takes a lot of effort. I'm not saying it's simple. The second prajna, prajna that transcends worldliness, well, we're fixing to cultivate that prajna right now because we're gonna sit in meditation and look at our minds and examine our experience. So that is, that punches that ticket. Uh, Now prajna, so we we sit in meditation, we let our attention rest on the breath. We sort of don't examine our experience as much as notice our experience. What does it feel like to feel the breath? Is my mind busy? Is it peaceful? What is the nature of my experience right now? Oh, did it just shift? What is it now? So we're, we're observing ourselves in meditation, in some sense, we're observing ourselves. Some people call that the witness, the observer, you know, makes sense. So the prajna that transcends dharma can be connected with, I believe, when you practice meditation and you notice your experience, And then at some point, my friends, you let go of the noticer. You let go of the observer. Think about that. When I first heard that, I was like, what? I thought cultivating a relation, you know, cultivating the inner observer was the practice. And it it is an important part of the practice. But at some point, I have been told, you let that go too. Then what? Every moment that arises, I have heard, arises, abides, dissolves, and leaves no trace. There's just now, and now, and now. Or as the great Texas singer-songwriter Butch Hancock said, now, it's now, again. I'm in Austin, Texas, so I might think of Butch Hancock anyway, but now, it's now, again is a sort of pith direction that points towards prajna that transcends dharmas. You can't go out and get prajna. I mean, you could study things in the first two categories, for sure. The third category, that prajna arises when we make space for it by relaxing. Practicing meditation is a form of relaxation that could, can lead, and in fact does, to prajna that transcends dharma's ultimate prajna and relative prajna. Enough for me. Let's practice together.
Begin your practice by sitting up straight. The legs are crossed loosely as mentioned, or your feet are flat on the floor if you're in a chair. The hands rest palms down just above the knee or somewhere mid thigh that feels natural. The, bice the biceps are parallel with the torso. And then if you just lift your arms and let your hands rest, we'll find the most natural spot. Let the belly relax. Let the shoulders relax. The chin is tucked a little bit, so the back of the neck is long. The mouth is closed. The lips and teeth are slightly parted. And let all the muscle, muscles of speech and the inclination to speak relax. You don't need them right now. Breath is natural in and out through the nose. The eyes are open and the gaze is cast down to a spot in front up to six feet or one and a half meters ish. And the eyes are open because we're practicing being awake. We're cultivating wakefulness, which is much more easily done when the eyes are open. Relax the forehead and the brow. Now let your attention rest on the breath, on the sensation of the body breathing in and out. This inhalation, this exhalation. Let the breath carry you. Let your thoughts be as they are. Most will come and go without overly distracting you. That's fine. You don't have to do anything about those thoughts. Only if you notice that your attention has become fully absorbed in thought to the point where you have forgotten completely about your breath. Do you want to do anything? And that anything is notice that. You're thinking, it's fine. Let go. Gently come back to the breath and begin again. Feeling this in breath, this out breath.
Thank you so much for your practice. Thank you for practicing with me. Thank you for practicing together. I hope to see you in the Open Heart Project Sangha. And I hope that you are well and that your loved ones are well too. <laughs>